Welcome back everyone, here is the PYP Traveler and today we will be having a cross-border discussion with Abdul Qadir Mole International School in Bangladesh where we will be discussing about the Enhanced PYP Planner. Please enjoy. I'm liking the logo PYP Traveler. <laughs> so uh, to add on I would like to you know tell one more thing that Master Vasilis is a budding YouTuber so you can subscribe to his YouTube channel as well. Yes, of course. Uh, it's the PYP Traveler. You can subscribe. You can watch the videos that I have uh, recorded so far. Uh, here are my communication data, so you can copy paste them, take snapshots, whatever. And uh, feel free to uh, just connect with me, send messages. Uh, I'm active. Uh, Asnaha knows that. So um, we can collaborate. We can work together. Doesn't matter where we are in the part in whatever part of the world. So uh, we're here to help each other. And um, we can start, right? Uh, so. Good to go. Yes, we can start now. Fantastic. So today's agenda, uh, we're going to be talking about agency, which is the core, the foundation of the PYP, uh, the enhanced PYP. We are going to be discussing about what is new about the enhanced PYP planner. Um, and then we will have a discussion on how we can plan together. Uh, how can we plan together as between us, like the teachers? How can we plan with our students? And how can we involve parents into the planning process? Um, also, we will discuss about the assessment, how the assessment looks like, how, how is it different uh, in the enhanced PYP when it comes to planning? So we will talk about tools and criteria, about feedback and reflection. How can this be used uh, for learning? Uh, everything under the spectrum of agency, of course. And we will be also talking about the reflection of the planner. Uh, who, how, and what is reflected in the reflection part. And then how can we use this uh, information we have gathered to move forward? How can we make a perfect use of this for us, but for the future teachers that may take, may handle our class in the next year? And of course, the discussion will follow to have this uh, conversation about what was shared. <clears throat> uh, when it comes to agency, teachers, students, and parents decide on what and how the learning will be facilitated. So we are all a team that we co-decide, okay? Uh, we share our opinions, we uh, take into consideration our prior experiences, our, inter uh, our interests, uh, and uh, our capabilities. Well, at the same time, this helps us uh, build whatever uh, to build the planner according to the resources that we have available, uh, as well as according to the diversities of the cultural background that the school belongs to. So, for example, if you are in a country uh, where um, the religion is a major factor for the lives of those citizens, then maybe this will be a very important part and element to be included into your planning. So. Uh, once everyone has their voice in the planning process, then um, the learning will be more complete. The learning will be more um, pleasurable for everyone. It is ongoing. The enhanced PYP planner is ongoing. That means that it's a living document and it doesn't mean that whenever you finish with the unit, uh, then you're done with a planner. Uh, that's not the case. You will have this document, let's say, live until the end of the year because you never know when the students will uh, showcase their differentiated actions, their initiative actions uh, along the year. For example, uh, in uh, one of my classes, uh, one student just showed up two units after our sharing the planet uh, unit that we were having and he brought uh, a diorama with uh, his uh, imaginary energy park. But this was not one of the activities that they should be doing uh, during the unit. So he wanted to be creative 
and he brought it into the school in order to show it to his friends. So that's an initiative action that happened way after the unit was concluded. But you as a teacher, you should mention this in the initiative action part, in the reflection part of your, um, of your planner. So that means that until the end of the year, all the planners are leaving documents. You, the new PYP planner also is inclusive. So that means that you take consideration of specialist teachers, um, students, parents, and local global environment. Um, it's a little bit different uh, when it comes to parents and local and global environment because you can because now you can have uh, a specific section where you can add your collaboration with other teachers from other schools. So you can have this global network of ideas. You can have hosts. You can have uh, this. What we're doing right now uh, can be also considered. Uh, to be um, in your planner if we are discussing about a specific unit of inquiry. Um, and students, of course, will be part of this planning process and their actions, their learning engagement suggestions can also be included into your planning process. And of course, the planner should be differentiated and um, depending on the needs and demands of your school, of your grade level, and the competencies of your students. If you follow all those, um, if you check all those different enhancements of the PYP planner, you will see that every planner is unique. For example, when you are having a unit about celebrations uh, in grade one, and you finish with this unit, no one can actually do the same in the next year who will have the same unit of inquiry because if he or she follows what has to be followed when you are planning this planner, then it will, it will not be the same. It cannot look the same. Maybe some parts, some bits and bolts will be the same or similar, but you cannot have an identical planner. It will be unique. So let's see, let's talk about what is new uh, with the enhancements with the PYP planner right now. So the PYP attitudes are gone. You will not consider them as specific elements, as unique elements into your planning process. They are integrated into the learner profiles. So for example, empathy, um, uh, empathy can be uh, integrated with a caring learner profile. Um, for example, uh, tolerance and respect can be um, also be integrated with a caring profile and also with a communicator one as well. So you see that now it's not so abstract, which, were, which this was actually causing many issues in the planning process because as you, are, as you also may think, it was different, it was difficult to differentiate the two because whoever feels sympathy or empathy for someone, it is something that is caring. So how can you assess the attitudes um, differently from the learner profiles, whereas this is the behavioral construction of a student and it is united. So thank God that the enhancements took this into consideration and they actually made it true, made it a uh, reality, and now it's one unique element, which you can assess right now. Also, <clears throat> the key concepts. We have seven key concepts now because the reflection is removed from a specific key concept. The reason is uh, because reflective has a reflection, sorry, has to be in all the units of inquiry. If you don't reflect on what you learn, if you don't reflect on what you already know, how can you move forward? How can you improve your metacognitive skills? How can you improve your higher order thinking skills? So reflection has to be in every unit of inquiry, in every part of the inquiry cycle. It has to be everywhere because this is a part of building and constructing your, uh, your knowledge uh, your knowledge as uh, when it comes to abstract knowledge, but also how, how you develop and how you progress as a human being. 
the TD skills. TD skills are gone. Um, it will be better if I say that they were renamed and got a little bit of an upgrade uh, because now they are uh, named approaches to learning, uh, which are broader and they have some, some sub skills which are more specific. And those specific sub skills can help the differentiation everywhere. It can help the differentiation not only in the academics, but also in the way that teachers approach students. How can you approach a student whose uh, social skills are way high, but their self-management skills are not so high? So you can, um, when you check in the sub-skills and you find that someone is so outgoing and um, he or she can adapt a variety of group roles, then you can use this and you can take, and the student can take advantage of it in the roles that he or she will be having in the classroom, helping uh, his or her students, help you, the teacher, uh, in um, accommodating the learning, in accommodating other students that need to boost their self-confidence. So uh, this was a very nice tweak that happened. And to me, it's one of the most important enhancements that have been introduced to uh, the PYP so far. And of course they can be assessed way easier now. So how you plan your, your units? So first of all, when you are having those collaborative meeting plans, um, you should have your initial reflection on existing planners because it's good to build on what you already have. If you don't have, of course, you start from scratch, but if you do, it's better to check what went well when you taught it, what could be improved. And if you have any additional thoughts, maybe the central idea would be very narrow. Maybe the lines of inquiry include words that should not be there because they, maybe they target the audience to a specific direction. They, were, they are not so open. So maybe you have to tweak some things. When you plan your units, the agency has to be the core. It has to be the foundation of what you are talking about because teachers alone cannot plan a complete unit of inquiry now. You cannot pre-plan the whole, let's say, first five stages of your inquiry because you have to take into consideration what the students and the parents have to say. You need to include this input into your, um, into your units, into your planners. So what you can do is that you can have a loose draft, a first draft of your planners. Let's say the skeleton of the whole process. After you brainstorm with your students, you can start filling it up gradually with minor or major adjustments. And everything is subject to change. Even the lines of inquiry may have to change because they will not correspond to the needs and the interests of your students. So how can you have participation of students? How can you have this interest? How can you have this flame, the ignition of imagination from students that do not care about what you're talking about? So you have to be very open-minded and you have to be willing and flexible enough to sit down with your students, to sit down with parents and add this input into your planners. Uh, learning objectives is something that you should consider it as teachers because you are the specialists. You have this knowledge so you know um, what could be a perfect fit for which unit. However, you have to differentiate your um, learning outcomes, let's say, uh, due to the needs uh, of the, the students. For example, if you think that multiplication for year three is good to go after Christmas, that would be nice. But what if you have students that they do not know how to add? And you have examples like this. So you cannot proceed with multiplication for all the students, but you have to make your differentiation for those students that do not know how to add. So addition may be extended. And of course, some learning outcomes may not be met because you have to take uh, into consideration the readiness of the students. Uh, it's not only the interest, but it's also the readiness. 
and you may have some students that join the school in the middle of the year. Maybe you have students that they join school in April. We have that in the international schools. So you have to do your pre-assessments to check what's going on with this specific student, where he or she is in academics, and then you should modify the learning objectives for math, for English, for whatever subjects you have in your school, according to where this student's level is. And uh, the PVP coordinator, or maybe one of the both, uh, can create some surveys uh, that you can ask the parents some specific questions, and then you can receive some answers that you can have the input from uh, the interest and what the knowledge from this particular houses exist so you can have a glimpse you can have an idea of the background of the students however you will also receive information from the parents that you can have a great assistance when you're planning your units um, this could be uh, either through google forms or you can use padlets you can use numerous other applications that exist when it comes to surveys um, just use your imagination uh, it can also be like if you don't if you're not so it literate let's say you can design your own questionnaires, which can be lovely, especially in the, in the younger ages, let's say early years, year one and two, for example. Um, put students into the game, make students interview their parents, make students create their questions and ask their students, their, sorry, and ask their parents about uh, what they need to find out. And also you can use them as your facilitators for the surveys they will be responsible to collect their, their, the answers from, this, from the parents. So you will include this family integration into your learning. Um, another very important way of how to have the input from parents is especially in the beginning of the year, uh, when you can have your open house uh, and you can, uh, intro you can um, invite parents and uh, introduce them to the IB program, you can introduce them to the POI of the year to, to have a small review, a small glimpse of what will be followed in the year to come, the school year to come, or which is the identical one, would be the ideal one, sorry, will be to have in-school workshops in the beginning of every unit. So you can have an afternoon Thursday meeting, uh, like a small event um, where you will invite parents and you will inform them about the central idea and the lines of inquiry of the upcoming unit. So you will have a brainstorm discussion and note down what their ideas, what their thoughts on the units are. You can also have some in-class participation you can, uh, in, you can invite parents as guests in the classroom. Uh, they can speak, for example, if you have a doctor and your unit is about body, uh, you, can have the, you can have the parent have a presentation about the human body, how, um, how we breathe, about the respiratory system, and so forth. So take advantage of this as well. Uh, or you can also, um, because you are building your ATL skills as well, and the enhanced PYP planner focuses a lot into the action because we have uh, voice agency ownership. So you can add the parents as volunteers into the school to organize the library, for example. They can have some library sessions uh, in the school. They will be responsible for those library workshops, how we can read or if they are not able to do that, they can show the, the students how they can choose books from the library according to the genre, and they can put them back, they can organize the shelves. Uh, this is very helpful for EY year one and year two. Organization skills is on the top notch with this one. Um, and what we do in our school is that we have a PTA, which is the Parent Teacher Association, which is a formal group where parents have decided who will be their representative as a president. They also have um, the, the secretary who is uh, responsible for taking down the minutes of our meetings and the accountant who will be responsible to handle the money that will be uh, received 
from uh, different charity events that they will use this money to help um, the facilities of the school or maybe some field trips for the students. It's like a living organism again that has a voice into the school. Um, let me continue. Okay, uh, again, ATL skills, um, this is something that could be added in my uh, previous slide, but ATL skills now can be assessed very uh, explicitly and implicitly. Uh, it can, uh, you can design learning engagements explicitly for some specific ATL skills, but also you can do it implicitly by um, offering a learning engagement that students can develop many more ATL skills. And this is depending on the nature and the characteristics of each student. So that again is a unique way of enhancing and assessing the ATL skills. Um, let's move on with this one because we analyzed it in the previous one. So uh, the matrix. When you are designing your learning engagements, this is a very big difference with the enhanced PYP planner because now every learning engagement matters. In the previous one, in the legacy PYP planner, the learning engagements tended to be tasks. Of course, according to uh, its PYP coordinator in every school, this was not the identical uh, case. However, the importance of the learning, uh, the learning engagements and the other PYP elements were not that clear. The connection was not that clear. Now, every learning engagement is significant, meaningful, and uh, matches with the essential elements that it will promote. For example, you can have you can have a whole unit of inquiry with just three learning engagements or even with just two learning engagements. As long as you have considered all those key elements that you see around in the, in the small clouds, if you match specific description and you, you match this with what related concepts will the students um, come across? What about the key concepts? Which key concepts will be explicitly or implicitly posed in this uh, task? In which stage of the inquiry cycle does this belong to? Um, maybe it will be used for multiple stages of inquiry. It depends on the learning engagement. Uh, what agency actions have been taken for this learning engagement to become reality? What about the reflection and the metacognition that this uh, learning engagement will promote? What about the ATL skills links? How will this be linked with the ATL skills that you want to promote, that you want your students to advance? And yet again, this has to fall down the uh, POI, vertical and horizontal articulation, because you have to, to, to have a balance on the ATL skills that you will promote um, throughout the year. What provocations will be used uh, into these learning engagements? And of course, in which uh, related line of inquiry this learning engagement may fall under. Yet again, this is flexible enough because according to how this learning engagement will be uh, completed along uh, throughout the unit, all these changes, it can be added, it can be uh, taken away. It's up to how the students and the parents will contribute to this learning engagement and what the learning will look like at the end of it. The assessment. The assessment now is much easier and it's easier to follow assist students and teachers into forming and doing and reflecting. It's nothing vague. Uh, it can be measured now. Uh, the uh, tools that you will be using, let me check the next slide. So yeah, here. So the prior knowledge, the ongoing, the formative and the summative assessments can now be um, used in a more meaningful way. The explanations that you use, the tools that you use, 
the learning outcomes that you connect with those assessments and the facets of understanding from the student's perspective are way more uh, visible, are way clearer, and the significance and the importance of the assessment is in place right now. Now, um, they have a purpose and they have a specific, um, they have a specific place into the learning and they can be used for the planning as a learning engagement as well. It's not only to assess what you're talking about, but you can also use it for learning. Feedback and reflection. So in the feedback and the reflection part of the unit, planner, again, uh, all teachers' perspective, homeroom and specialists should be included, as you already know, the students' reflection and feedback as well, as well as the parents. Um, evidence of understanding uh, can also be added up with hyperlinks. For example, um, you can have a table into your planner where um, we, will, we will discuss about the databases in the next, uh, in the next slide, uh, but I think that here is a good connection to mention it. So for example, you can have a Google Drive folder and you can connect um, the evidence of understanding with a subfolder into the Google Drive folder and you can add uh, the pictures from the evidence that the students understood the central idea or the key concepts. You can create folders for each specific element and you can have hyperlinks which match into this database. So further on, when the evaluation team uh, comes from the IB, you will have your database ready to be assessed and evaluate it very easily and you don't have to, let's say, prove anything more because everything will be there. Um, I think that, of course, you know CISO. So it will be like CISO, but for every single element of this unit. And uh, it's, it's way better to have this archive, let's say, uh, in, in place when it's happening, rather than trying to collect evidence after the unit is over, because it's very difficult to have this organization at the end, whereas if you're doing this in the process and you're following the ongoing live documentation, it will be easier in the end and the product and the result will be uh, even more phenomenal. <clears throat> um, ATL and learner profile attributes can also be reflected on knowledge, conceptual understanding across subject. This again should be done in uh, correlation with um, what the specialists have been assessing and have been teaching throughout the units. You can include uh, reflection on student initiated actions and inquiry. Again, this can be uh, added up later, like in the second or third unit, uh, based on the, the evidence and the proof that they bring from the previous unit, as we talked in the beginning. Um, student agency, how students did co-construct, they co-designed, they self-regulated and they self-assessed what they learned. This should be supported and backed up with photos, with um, videos, with resources that have been found from the student's inquiry process. And how did students feel about what they learned, about how, did, how the unit was facilitated, how the unit was fulfilled because the students uh, the students emotions also matter because this is the voice and the ownership of the students how they feel that the unit was done with their own uh, parameters with their own characteristics and interests did they enjoy their learning process what didn't they enjoy the, in their learning process and this can be used um, to upgrade your teaching next year or in the next unit. Who knows? And whatever you are doing, whatever you, whatever you are learning, it will be amazing if you celebrate it, if you share these learning accomplishments. Uh, you can do it as a school through assemblies. You can organize them uh, every unit, in every second unit, even term assembly, whatever. 
the PYP exhibition is also uh, the culmination of all those um, celebrations that the PYP has to offer. Science fair, the science fair, again, it comes to the upper PYP. Uh, a bazaar, it could, uh, this, the bazaar could be an art bazaar. It could be a music bazaar. It can be a um, history bazaar uh, with uh, all the activities and the creations that the students have been participating throughout the unit. And you can organize some small charity, let's say, events with this bazaar and whatever the amount is, you can offer it to an organization to assist the community. Um, community service, this is the second one. Local action, you can go, for example, in the, in the sharing the planet, you can go and you can um, clean the environment, you can clean a forest, you can clean the streets uh, with the students and uh, promote the social and community service. Actually, the options are limitless. Like you just, just think and be creative, be open-minded, how you can, how you can take advantage of the environment in your local community. How can you use this for your learning and planning? So we have to learn to connect, to share, and to grow together. And this is a very good message that we as teachers should uh, promote to our students and the parents, because if we are together, then everything will be better and easier for the learning community. So that was it. Um, Thank you so much and thank you so much for all your wonderful efforts. I could see, you know, you, you have put in a lot of efforts and your presentation was concise and in a nutshell, you have covered almost, you know, what we are up to and uh, teachers are really excited. So I request if you have some questions, teachers, uh, Vasili will answer the question. And yeah, please unmute one by one and share your questions or your reflections about the session. So we welcome you to reflect now because we end all the PYP things with a reflection. So it's time to reflect. So teachers, please unmute yourself. If any one of you want to ask any question, unmute and ask. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Gadar. Yeah, Hello. we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Basili. Uh, I'm Mr. Abdul Khadi uh, from Language Teachers. So uh, it's it's really uh, amazing and helpful for us. Uh, it will help us a lot. Uh, even though we have uh, I came to know about the PIP enhancement uh, through our PD session from our PIP uh, coordinator, but uh, the way you uh, present it precisely with your graphic organizer and the uh, PowerPoint presentations and the clips and clear, uh, I hope it will add a new flavor uh, in our enhancement learning. Uh, thank you so much for your session and uh, I have one question for you like uh, when it's a matter of like uh, engaging the parents like the community is different in different areas like, suppose in subcontinent uh, the engagement is different uh, in your country is a uh, uh, parents engagement is different so uh, uh, just if you share your experience like uh, the 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 interactive way or, or, or a, a uh, like a uh, the creative way or a easy way to engage uh, the local uh, parents like local community because uh, the parents are, are different in in a different region yes i i think i understand what you're saying um that's why i said that we have to take into consideration the cultural background uh of yeah every school because uh, uh, every international school has some local teachers that they come from this local environment and they know how to twist how to tweak uh, whatever we as educators want to do so we if we sit down and we communicate as teachers and we decide on how messages will be communicated to the parents this will be a very um, nice way to introduce what we want to those uh, parents uh, I understand what you say about the, re the restraint that some parents have according to the open-mindedness part of the program. However, we can add a little bit every time. Um, yeah. 
I know there are some topics that are very controversial and it's like in some continents, in some countries, it's very hard to introduce or even there are red flags. So we can, we can omit some explicit parts for those communities, but we can, we can do, like we can offer the same results in another way, like in a smoother way, according to what this society is exposed to. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions or reflections or ponderings? Anything you can share? Good morning. Sorry, good evening. Good afternoon. This is Ms. Nahid. <laughs> good afternoon, good Ms. Nahid. It's all, you know, upside down for us. So it is afternoon <laughs> for us and probably, you know, afternoon for us. It's like after, it's, tw yeah. it's 12 25 here. So it's afternoon All right, as so well. it's afternoon for us, yeah. Okay, Nahid. Okay, yeah, so ahead. good morning and afternoon for you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr. Vasily. It was really wonderful session. And you know, at a glance, we can see everything is in, in one place. So what we are practicing, uh, this the reflection, This your uh, session was a reflection of that. So it was really very informative. Thank you very much. And I have one question. Sure. I am the teacher, a homeroom teacher of grade All three. All of them are inquirers, so, Vasily. So sorry. <laughs> they will be asking you questions. No so worries. No to... worries. Uh, it's my pleasure. On like, the other hand, yeah, this Vasily is, is, this is the reason why I created the channel, right? Like to have yes, this discussion. And you know, we, are, we, are, we are actually portraying what we are. So here they are inquisitive and there you are open minded. So yeah. No, bro, go ahead. I will okay. share the presentation with you, Asnaha, so you can share it with your teachers. Thank you so much. That's okay. so great of you. Thank you so much. Yes, Nahid, you okay. can ask him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miss and Mr. Wesley. Uh, the thing is, this year we started our online uh, classes and uh, the students are really uh, very new to this, uh, uh, this thing. And <clears throat> what we are uh, facing now, we are facing uh, some, I should say, struggle or something like uh, in online classes, sometimes uh, for a group, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. For group work, uh, we are facing some problems like we cannot uh, connect them, like how can uh, they present together. So if you, uh, if you uh, talk about some strategies, like sure. uh, what can we follow for them so that uh, they can, uh, they can uh, do the group work and they can uh, present together at a time mm -hmm. like we are facing uh, some problems here i think so if you uh, talk about some strategies oh i would be very happy sure of course uh, so for example um we i talked about something uh on uh, databases that you can have uh google uh, google google docs google slides are amazing tools for collaborative work because uh, they can uh, they can have presentations, they can create presentations, they can write their uh, poems, they can write their journal, they can write their actual uh, descriptive writing uh, at the same time um, on Google Docs. So it's 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 uh, free. So you don't have to pay any subscription for that. And by if you offer through Zoom some. Uh, guidance on how to deal with the Google Docs. Um, you can use this tool in your distance learning. I did uh, for my classroom uh, now with the coronavirus and uh, we actually wrote a letter for UNESCO. Uh, we created our own poems. Um, you also Flipgrid is another application that you can use uh, and you and students uh, can record their responses on video and they can reply to each other. Um, don't don't be um, don't be afraid that the um, that the students will be exposed uh, with the videos and stuff because you will be uh, the only author of this specific grid that you will create and the students will be entering with a QR code that you will share with them. So it will be just for you. It will be exclusively for your classroom. And um, 
the students will also have fun and they will reflect and uh, assess each other. They can assess themselves as well. Um, but when it comes to writing and when it comes to presenting, I believe that Google Docs help a lot. Google Slides as well. Uh, but you have to introduce this to, to, to them. Not the whole thing, just specific attributes of the program that will facilitate them for the presentation that you want them to do. And uh, if you share, if you create separate files, separate Google slide documents, and you share them with, um, and you share them with specific students uh, that you want to work with, or uh, because we are also including agencies, so they have to choose who will work with. Again, yet again, it's up to you how you separate the students. So you can share the specific document with those specific uh, persons. So I think that this-, this Yes, thank you so much, Vasilis. And Ms. Nahid, to add on, you are using Google Docs already, right? So for example, there are four students. So you can create a Google Doc and you can create with all those four students. And then they can work collaboratively one way. Another way you can use Padlets as well, right? So Padlet yeah. is again a very good tool. You can use Padlet too. And uh, MindMeester you can use for group, you know, brainstorming, you can use MindMeester. It is again a very good tool. You can use uh, uh, this Edmodo. Edmodo is again, it's a, um, you know, award-winning tool for collab collaboration. So these four tools can be used for collaborative learning. And Google Doc is the mo most easiest way to, you know, collaborate when it comes to learners. Yes, they will be needing a bit of training. But yes, series, we have started remote learning, you know, within no time, we didn't even get time to transition within two days, we set up our Google classroom and all credit goes to these guys. So we have now complete setup, we have just replicated the brick and uh, you know, mortar model to the digital learning, and it's going on well, and the school is in very remote area. So for us, it was a bit more challenging, you know, educating the parents and then educating the learners. And uh, you mentioned about evidencing learning and you know how these guys are evidencing learning all of them are bloggers so it had been you know one year they have been blogging so this is something which I learned as a teacher when I was a teacher and it, I passed it on to them and they picked it up so very well they have been differentiating learning so they all are doing a wonderful job and your presentation will add on you know it's it's a cherry on cake so they will it, we are kickstarting our journey for enhanced PYP and I appreciate all your efforts and so, so sweet of you that you came here and them and they are using their network to educate learners. So it's all about, you know, developing a learning community. So we look forward to you, you know, many more collaboration. Sometime we and your teachers will collaborate and soon we will be having a YouTube recording if everything will be in place and you can again uh, portray this session in one of your recording and I hope teachers are okay with it, right? We are, we are here to help each other. So many people will learn from our conversation and any other questions do you have? We still have Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, I want... All right, yes, all right Manos, go ahead. Please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the all the appreciation and thank you, Vasilis. It was a wonderful, informative, to the point presentation. Uh, when you were you were presenting, I was listening to listening to it very carefully, and I was jotting down my questions. But the the more the presentation was on progress, my questions all were answered. Uh, it was really wonderful. Thank you again. But still, I have I I need a little elaboration where you spoke about the learning engagement. You say that within uh, in one unit we can even have <coughs> excuse me two to three learning engagements. Yes. And uh, what did you mean by that? Can you please elaborate this portion? Of course. Thank you. So, for example, you can have uh, you can have let's say three learning engagements uh, that uh, can consist the whole unit because you don't have to finish the learning engagement by the end of the unit of inquiry session that you have in the day. You can expand on your discussions. You can uh, expand on the, uh, for example, um, you can have sub, sub tasks uh, that fall under one learning engagement, which is the broader 
um, the broader spectrum where all those elements will be included. So for example, if you are doing a survey, let's say, the survey will be uh, your math integration uh, for uh, where we are in place and time, let's say. So uh, if you will do the survey, you have many stages that they fall under uh, this learning engagement. So you have to find out about what this uh, survey will be about. So what will you research about? Uh, then you will create your questions. So you can start uh, teaching how we can ask open-ended questions. So you will introduce what, where, who, uh, where, when, uh, and those are also key concepts. So if you are focusing on specific key concepts for the specific learning engagement, you will focus only on what, if it's form, or on how, if it's function, or why, if it's causation. So um, you, will, uh, you will specifically add um, this, uh, this element into your learning engagement. Uh, then you will um, make, then you will design the, the survey. Will it be a digital one? then you can use the Google Docs. So just sit down and imagine how many sessions you need to form all this uh, engagement so far. Then after you, you finish with the creative part, you have to continue with the actual implementation of the survey. So you will ask the teachers, you will ask the people, whatever. Then you will collect this evidence, you collect this data, sorry, you will collect this data. After you collect this data, you will organize it. Then when you organize it, <clears throat> excuse me, you will introduce tally charts or you will introduce the pie, pie graph, uh, bar graph. Um, how many sessions do you need in order to uh, make the students understand how to build a bar graph, how to build a pie chart? Then you will move forward uh, on, uh, for, for example, if you are in year four, let's say, oh, I have less than a minute, it says. Uh, so if uh, you are in year four and you want to introduce mean, mode, mean, median, and range, uh, how many sessions do you need to introduce them to those? We are about sessions? to end the yeah. meeting in less than one minute. Okay, so I sorry. will. Yeah, no worries. Okay. I will, enjoy. Uh, I will uh, rejoin. Uh,